a job name's favor i need four hands to fill out a crew for sedalia sedalia you got the wrong party mister i've been to sedalia seven dollars a week and all the grub you can eat man says they're offering ten over on the chipham the man's a liar but if you want promises i'll throw in a bottle of kentucky liquor every thursday and three blondes to fan your brow when you ride and drag is that a fact you want brunettes couldn't make a redhead he'll make it pink and white pintos if he has to now, who's your cook? G.W. Wishbone. Cranky little cuss about so high? That is him. Well, get out the pen and ink. Uh, does this dough wrangler know his business? Friend, I understand he cooks biscuits even you could chew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heel squatting cow nurses. You heard what the man said? Wants a crew for Sedalia. How many do you need? Four. Man wants four good men. That's me and one extra. Web Church. Now you just relax. I'll work the whole thing out. Come on, come on, come on. What do you want to do? Tie in a feather bed? A yeah, real takeover type, ain't he? Leave him be. He's doing fine. I will say, as soon as he picks up three more, feed him a couple of drinks and bring him over to Wade's ranch. Where are you going? See the man. Mr. Parker. Mr. Favor. Looks like a stampede hit. What happened? Oh, boys get a little restless in town. They'll settle down once they're back to work. Uh, get your crew filled? Close enough, except my scout ain't showed up yet, but he'll probably come back soon. I figure to be ready in three, four days. Yeah, well, uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I couldn't cut it much closer than that, unless you want us to brand all night. Mr. Favor, we... Come over to the Cattlemen's Association with me. We're having a meeting, all the owners. We need you in on it. you have half the herd. Howdy, Mr. Favor. Gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Favor. Well, come on. You're the one that wanted to see him. How much did he tell you? Not a thing. I figured you had the big mouth. You might as well do the talking. Suits me. You can draw pay for the three days you've been lining up a crew, Mr. Favor. You're being replaced. Replaced? Why? Has nothing to do with your work. I know your reputation. It's a good one. You can bet your last nickel it's a good one. Because he gets the job done. Ask Kriegel. Ask Blunt. George, part of that last herd was yours. Any complaints? He got my beeves through. He got my price. I say stick with him again. That's what you say. Huh? Well, I don't. I want a tougher man. 
I want a man who can get the job done faster than Mr. Faber. Jubal, listen. You want to split the herd? Your 1600 couldn't go it alone any better than my 500. Sit down, Jubal. Mr. Faber, I got 400 head of steers. I got to get to market. I can't afford to do it on my own. I'll wait a minute. It's all right, Mr. Parker. 1600 head is a pretty convincing argument. Good day to you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Faber, that drive's gonna need all the experience it can get. I'm asking you to go along anyway, at the same salary, if I have to pay it out of my own pocket. Just go along. As what? Ramrod. No, thanks. Oh, by the way, who is the new trail boss? You're looking at him. Luck. Church and these three men over here all signed up. Great. You know, that church has got more lip than any muley cow I've ever seen. Somebody told him we didn't have a scout. So he says to me, he says, Yates, he says, don't worry about the scout. He says, I'll take care of it. Imagine that. You know, he's never even been on the Sedalia Trail in his life. I just said to him, I says, Church, look, being as you've got all this talent, why don't you just take over being trail boss? Yeah, you know, he says to me, good idea. So then I said, well, don't you? Don't mm -hmm. you ever slow down? I thought you'd be interested in what happened. Maybe you thought wrong. I guess I did. The bad luck. <clears throat> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know how you feel, and I think you deserve an explanation why it happened. Look, you don't know me an explanation. It happened. Yeah. Listen. How old would you say I am, Mr. Faber? Couldn't guess. I make a guess. Hmm. Your forties? Forty, Mr. Faber. I'll be fifty-one in March. Well, congratulations. Were you in the war? Look, Mr. Wade. I said I was too old. I was forty when that war started. I was the best trail boss in the Southwest, and I mean that. I'd just gotten married, and my wife was seventeen. She wanted me to stay, but I signed on with the blockade runner, and they took us off Mobile, September 62. They sent us to Camp Douglas. That's just outside of Chicago. Ever hear of the place? Yeah. When I come out of there, I weighed 93 pounds. Consumption. They hurried my papers through so they wouldn't bury me there. Sorry. No. My wife thought I was dead, and I didn't let her know any different. I scared up a couple of dollars and I went to Arizona and bought some cows. And I, well, I hit it lucky. At the end of five years, I got my lungs cleared up and had a herd to boot. And that's when I come home to this. It's my wife, Charity. Eh? Mm. She's 27 now, prettier than when I left. And I got it all back. Wife, health, money. It's the same as it was. Is it? <laughs> you got a real good ear, Mr. Faber. You hear it sticking in my craw, don't you, that I'm 50 instead of 40. When I left, the herds were just going north. I'm going with them this time. It's like closing the circle, Mr. Faber. I have to go. You understand that? I see you don't mind killing yourself to make a point. The point is, I won't kill myself. Who are you making this point to? Me? Jubal Wade. Who else? Well, that's it, and I just wanted you to know that uh, there was nothing personal in what I did, nothing against you, no. As a matter of fact, I want to second John Parker. I'd be proud if you'd come with me on the drive. Oh, thanks. I'll find something else. Where? Season's done. What about your men? Well, they'll be going with you. They are if you're along to handle them. Well, these are some of the best hands in the business. Maybe, maybe not. I just soon pick a crew for my own ranch. Well, men I know. I promise these men work. They're, they've given up good jobs. Some of them even have families. I said I'd keep them if you're the ramrod. Now, I hope you change your mind. I'll hold the position open until noon tomorrow. Think it over.
Hi, boss. What? Pete! Hey! Just noticed you were resting here in the hotel. I thought I'd... Yeah. Well, uh, how are you? I'm fine. Just passing through. I'm passing through, huh? Oh, where? I'm going out to California. California? Well. Oh, uh, how's old Wishbone? Oh, fine, fine. Rowdy? Just fine, just fine. Must he? Yeah, well, he's, he's fine, too. Sure, every, everybody's fine. Okay. Uh, I guess you've hired yourself a new scout by now. No, as, as a matter of fact, I haven't. Uh, still shopping around. Oh, well, don't get the wrong idea. I'm, I'm not looking for a job. Oh, no, no. Uh, did you bring my horse and saddle back down the trail? Sure, got all your gear. Pick it up anytime you want. Yes, I am, too. Am? What? I'm looking for a job. Now, let me finish. I've been here in San Antonio three days trying to make up my mind whether to come here and tell you, but I'm sorry about that fight. Oh, now, that was just as much my fault as it was yours. No, it wasn't, but well, let's don't scout. Start it again. Now, that's a good idea. Uh, anyhow, I'm flat broke. I'm ready to go back to work. You're broke? I'm worse than that. I gotta have a hundred dollars by tomorrow night. A hundred? A hundred dollars? What happened? A fella fell in an inside straight. You got nicked in a poker game? I thought you were smarter than that. You gotta have something to do to pass the time. Look, I had two bullets and a king kicker. And I picked up another ace, I figured I had him. Oh, well, you don't need the money right away, do you? I mean, you could hold this guy off, couldn't you? They've been following me all day. Look, I wouldn't ask you for this, but I know I can pay you back before we get to Sedalia. All you gotta do is dock me until we're clear. Yeah. Yeah, well, sure, sure. All right, Pete. I'll, I'll get an advance from the owners first thing in the morning. Thanks, boss. It's good to be back. Hey, it's good to have you back. Uh, drink? Yeah, drink. <laughs> I'll be glad to get out of these things, I'll tell you. see why you have to burn them all again, Jubal. Well, I told you, it's the law. You gotta have a road brand, because every steer in the drive is marked the same. Oh, I thought you'd be pleased. Well, think how it hurts. Oh, now, it don't hurt. Steer is high, it ain't like your skin, Jerry. Lucky mine's softer. You'd be wanting to brand me, too. Well, might be a way to prove ownership. Go ahead, Ern. All right, let's start the branding. What's going on out there? Putting the road brand on, ain't they? The road brand without the boss to say so? What do you think you're doing? Well, I'm gonna put the trail brand Who on. Who made up that brand? Mr. Way. I don't know whether you know it or not, but the trail boss makes up the trail brand, not the owner. Now put that back in there. Deaf or something? Put it back. Friend, maybe you'd like to wear this across your face. You just try that. Oh! Ow! Jubal, 
people. Stay here. This flannel mouth tried to stop the branding. No one brands until the trail boss says so. The trail boss did say so. You're a liar. Buddy! Oh, am I glad to see you. What's going on? Tell these people who the trail boss is, will you? That'd be Mr. Wade. Are you joking? Is that job still open? Still open. You've got yourself a ramrod. A ram? Come on, right over to the house. No, it's nothing. Here. Well, come on. Come on. Mr. Favor, I want to thank you on behalf of of all the owners. Mr. Parker, I'll need an advance of $100. Of course. Boss, I see what's going on here. I don't need the money that bad. Next time a man draws one card and stays for two rounds, please fold. I see what you mean. Thanks. Church, be right over and tell Rowdy I want to see him. Right, boss. Take some of the sting out of it. Open your shirt. What's that? Just butter. Open your shirt. Oh, no, it really doesn't hurt, uh, ma'am. <laughs> I don't believe I've seen you around here before, Mr. Uh, Yates, uh, Rowdy Yates. No, I don't. Generally spend much time around San Antonio. I imagine he gets lonely driving the herd north. It's not really too bad. I suppose when you boys hit Sedalia, you really cut loose. A little. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's just about the only chance you get to relax, isn't it? When the drive's ended and just before it starts. We're having a fandango here tonight. Yeah, I heard about that. My husband hates them. Gets out of breath when he dances. Do you dance, Mr. Yates? Well, I've been known to try a little. Roddy, you in? I didn't mean to. What are you doing here? Mr. Faber wants to see you. I'll get you a bandage. Boy, what do you got I ain't got? Except for a burnt hide. Hmm. It's probably pretty easy to get burnt around here. You mean you don't go for them lonely little gals? Well, I ain't so sure she's lonely. She might be a little sick. <laughs> and just call in old Doc Church. You take over everything, don't you? I haven't found a job yet I couldn't handle. All right. You take this one over. My pleasure. Here he comes, Mr. Favor. You want to see me? Yeah. That's everybody. You know, Quince? Yeah, boss. That's just it. I'm not your boss anymore. There's a new drive, and it's got a new trail, boss. And the sooner you get it through your heads, the easier it's going to be on everybody. Mr. Wade's a good man. 
He was pushing beef when most of us were playing with mud pies. He's smart, he knows the business. And he's carrying about 10 years too many. And how many years too many are you carrying, Wish? Oh, well, it's different with me. I keep in shape. I'm not gonna argue with any of you. I told you how it stacks up, that's it. Mr. Wade is boss, I'm Ramrod. Well, what's that make me? A drover, a regular drover. Suppose I don't like that, though. You can quit. Any more questions? All right, let's get out there and help with the Brandon. Sure, boss. I figure we can make more than five miles a day at first, at least until we cross Mud River. There's no need for you to range farther than two days out. 20 miles at the outside, right? Favor, I'm putting you... Favor. Yes, sir. I'm putting you at point. You can pick your own drag and flank now. Yes, Mr. Wade. Incidentally, favor. Your men know who's bossing this drive? They know. Good. Well, I guess that does it. We'll head them up at sunrise. Well, I think I'll get some shut-eye. It's a good idea. This wingding's gone on long enough. Anybody see my wife? Oh, she was dancing with church a minute ago. <sighs> She's crazy about dancing. What a night, what a night, what a night. Faber, did you ever play King of the Hill when you were a kid? Yeah, sure. See? That's the way I feel right now. King of the Hill. No, better. King of the world. Like I was 20 feet tall. Well, I better see if I can find Mrs. Wade. Here she comes now, Mr. Wade. Oh. Jubal, you gonna stay out here all night? It's after 11. And... Half your guests have left. Fine, let's send the other half after them. Hair's all loose. Where's that pretty comb you were wearing? Where was it gone? Must have dropped it while I was dancing. You can buy me another one in Sedalia. I'll buy you a hundred. Night, boys. Mr. Wade, ma'am. Good night. Good luck on the drive. King of the Hill. And nothing. and yell goodbye, but she's so far away she couldn't hear me. No, I guess she couldn't.
got nothing to do? Rowdy, if you want advice, who'd you go to? What kind of advice? Person. I suppose I'd try Mr. Favor. Yeah, that's what I figured. You don't think we can make it? Well, a bug's a bug. We might make it again, we might not. All right, we'll bend them west. Tell the flanks. Well, shouldn't I tell the trail boss first? Ain't time. Get moving. Just come to see you. Moving off the trail. No, it's all right. It's not all right. Hold him! What'd he say? He said to hold him. Mr. Favor told us Quince? to. Quince? Just remember, Mr. Favor ain't giving the orders anymore. Yeah, I guess you're right. What the devil's the matter with you? What do you think I put that point for? Mr. Wade, there's a bog up ahead. Bog? What bog? There's no bog in the trail maps. Well, there's an underground stream through here, and sometimes it'll make it like walking on quicksand. Favor, I don't intend to go around obstacles. I intend to go straight through them. I don't mind losing a few heads, but I do mind losing time. If we keep going, most of the herd will get across, bog or no bog. And we'll have saved two or three days that you would have taken going around. Mr. Wade, I'm not talking about a couple of heads. I'm talking about half the herd. Who are you giving orders to? Sorry, Mr. Wade, I didn't realize I was giving orders. Nolan! What's this about a bog? Just over there. And yeah, we're right in front of it. Maybe we can bust through it instead of going around. Why don't you shut your butts through a mouth, huh? Look, I think I got a right to what I think. You ain't paid for thinking. Shut up, both of you. What about it, Nolan? There's a bog over there. I told Mr. Favor about it. Well, why didn't you tell me? I guess I should have. Your guess. I know. You don't know. Well, let me tell you something. I went over every foot of that trail with three cowpokes who come down it not two months ago. And nobody said anything about a bog. Maybe it was dry two months ago. Well, is it dry now? It looks pretty marshy. Wait a minute. I'm asking you, can you tell me if the herd can get through or if the herd can't get through? It might. And then it might not. Mr. Wade. Look, when I want to hear from you, I'll ask you. Anybody else got a contribution? All right, then get those beams back on the trail. Keep them there. Favor. I know this ain't much of a time to bother you. Then don't. Just do what the man says. Get him moving. Say it. Mr. Wade, it's really bad up ahead. 
There must be 30 steers bogged down. They're stuck in mud up to their neck. It's going to take a week to pull them out. Shoot them. All of them? All of them. Yes, sir. Roddy? Mr. Wade says to shoot the ones that are bogged in bad. What, with dynamite? They're up to their necks. Now, what do you think of your trail, boss? He made a mistake. You could have made it, so could I. You mean you could have made it? I wouldn't have made it. Neither would Mr. Favor. Well, it's just this one rotten little strip of quicksand mud. It's one rotten strip of bog, that's what it is. We're working, ain't we? Ain't this better than sitting back in San Antonio, sitting around waiting? You like working here in the mud, Teddy? I don't like it, but as long as they're paying me. <laughs> Try some of it. All right, that's enough! Get out there. You got a job to do, Roddy. Shoot him. Quince? Yes, sir. You'd better go with Roddy and help him. And take Church with you. Church ain't here, boss. Where is he? Well, he lit out. Said he's quitting going back to San Antonio. What for? Don't know. All right, go ahead. Kent, you go with him. Oh. I'm not hungry. Man has to eat, boss. Mail! Mail from town, gentlemen! Big stack for you, Mr. Favor. Hey, plenty for everybody. Favor. 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 Ramrod. I'll pass them out. Uh, these on top are for me, all right, if I take them, boss? Take them. Yates. Yeah. Little. Yeah. Wentz. Scarlet. You know, if I was the first man on the moon, there'd Watch be a bill waiting there for me. Nolan. What's the matter, Benjamin? From Parker. Oh, yeah? Pete? Webb Church went back to town. Teddy. And he and Mrs. Wade are running off together back east. Church and Mrs. Wade? Quince? Oh, well, I should have guessed it. And Parker uh, wants me Scarlet. to break the news to Wade. And down comes the king of the hill. Scarlet? Yeah. Wishbone. Is that the lot of them? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Wade. Charity's a funny one. She always keeps adding to her letters. I'll probably get one the size of bedroll along about Red River Station. Yeah, probably you will. I did go man to shirt or something. I want to talk to Mr. Favor. You heard me. Be sure and be real gentle with him like he was with you. Well, what was that all about? You're not going to give him that. Look, if you're going to start passing on advice, I don't need it. Well, whether you need it or not, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, we've been through a lot together. When you've been right, I told you, and when you've been wrong, I told you that, too. Well, you're wrong about that. A man's got a right to know if his wife runs off with another man. 
Look, Parker is his friend. Now, why would Parker have told me to tell him if, if he didn't have a good reason for it? If it breaks up the drive, it breaks it up. It's the way the man wants it done. You give that to Wade and you cause nothing but trouble. If that's true, well, it's done, finished. But if that's nothing but gossip, you set Wade off for no reason at all. Or is that what you want? I'll break it to him easy. Oh, sure, like you did about the bog. Now, you heard what happened. Wouldn't listen. Well, you can't have two trail bosses on a drive. Half of them listening to him and half of them to you. What Wade needs is help. If he don't get it, this drive's finished. The only thing the owners will remember is that Gil Favor was along and it's Gil Favor's fault. And if we get there to Sedalia, what will the owners remember? Well, just that Gil Favor isn't too bad a ramrod. Hey, Favor. I noticed that one of those letters you got was from Parker. Any, uh, any news from home? Oh, nothing. Nothing important. Kettle-bellied scrubs. Yates? Yeah? How are they? As jumpy as a tree full of loaded dice. Yeah. I don't like that hollering. One pass from that critter and we'd have a stampede in our hands. Mr. Favorite handle it. Mean and I couldn't? Mean and nothing. You got a big mouth for a young pup, you know that? Yeah, that's a matter of opinion. Mr. Favor, teach you disrespect along with everything else? Look, don't crowd me, Mr. Wade. I'll crowd you, you miserable young punk. What do you think you're on, some kind of a picnic? I'll crowd you, I'll crowd you clear back to San Antonio. You come out here and try to spook me. Spook you? Draw your pay, Yates, you're through. Oh, you're a real big man, Mr. Wade, especially with your wife, huh? What was that? I saw the letter. What letter? You know, the letter Mr. Favor showed. Yeah. He didn't show me any letter. He got one from Parker. What did the letter say? Look, I'm out of line, Mr. Wade. Don't what did he on. say? He said a man named Church ran off of your wife, that's what he said. Ten minutes ago. Where's Mr. Wade? He said he was going to check the herd. Well, I got to talk to him. Oh, what's wrong? Another bog? Oh, this could be worse. What is it? Comanches. Comanches? Where? About two days north of here. I think they're heading for the mountains. We'll just stay and be quiet. They might miss us. Can't stay without grass. What about west of here? Well, there's some grazing. Water holes? Well, there's a couple, but I wouldn't guarantee them to be wet this time of year. I'd better get away. Favor? How come you ain't in night guard? I had the uh, Scarlet take over for me. You seen Mr. Wade? Well, uh... What? Uh, you either seen him or you ain't. Well, I slept and I told him about his wife. You what? Why? Because I thought you'd told him already, that's why. What is all this? Come on. Mr. Wade, where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? Mr. Wade, that... That might all be a mistake. Besides, there's something more important. Pete? We've got a problem, Mr. Wade. I ran across a party of Comanches up north of here. If we stick to the west, I figure we're gonna run short of water, but we can't stay here without grass. Keep north. Comanches play rough. You've got guns. Keep north. Pete? 
Happy? How many in that party? 50, 60 braves. How far off is the water? It's too far to turn back if we're wrong. Oh, why risk it? We all heard him give the order. He wasn't in any shape to know what he was saying. We might have a better chance at the water hole. We don't know the Comanches are going to attack. If they do, we lose half the herd. But that's not our problem. That's Wade's. He gave the order. Mr. Wade isn't here. Mr. Favor's in charge. If we go against Mr. Wade's orders and go out there and get caught without water, you know who's going to get the blame. And if we make it, he gets the credit. So either way, we're taking the risk to save his reputation. You can't take a chance on 60 Comanches. We'll try for water. But boss. I said we'll try for water. Rowdy, you'll head him out at dawn. I'll head him out. Where are you going? Going after Wade. What for? Help him find his wife if that's what he wants. If that's his bed, let him lie in it. Church tried to talk to me. I cut him short. Quit trailing me. I don't need you. You might. Sometimes I can't figure you out at all. Me either, sometimes. We'll pick up new mounts here and see if we can trace them past San Antonio. Howdy, Mr. Wade. Earn, take care of the horses and saddle up some fresh ones. Well, uh... Well, what? She's back, Mr. Wade. When? This morning. Just her alone? No, sir. Both of them. They're inside. Mr. Wade, look, they're back at something. Why don't you hear them out first? Wait, he ain't got a gun. Give him yours. I won't take it. You sneak. I made him bring me back. I couldn't leave you, Tubal. Couldn't you, Cherry? You understand? Yeah. I expect you wonder what came over me when you heard that. Let's go inside. It's getting late. I'll send your clothes on to the San Antonio Hotel. Ernie will drive you in. You don't want to stay out after dark. Hotel? The stage leaves around noon, I think. Used to, anyway. Jubal, I haven't got a penny. Hitch up the rig, Ern. Yes, sir. I'm going back to the herd. If you're still here by the time I get my horse saddled, I'll cut your throat. Webb? You'll take me with you? I was the one who made you come back, remember? It's gonna be a long, tough ride back to San Antonio. It shouldn't be half so tough as the ride back this morning. Why'd the good Lord ever give a man a conscience, anyway? Beats me. You know, the old boy packs a pretty tough wallop. You're smart. You sure made him look good in front of his men. Well, I'd say I was pretty brainless, Mr. Favor. At times. There's only one more water hole marked 
marked on this map. Over that hill and dead ahead. What if it's as dry as the last two? Let's find out. It looks like we're still in business. Don't you ever get tired of always being right, Faber? There's a big difference between being right and being lucky. Well, we had a lot of both on this move. We ran into an army patrol. They lost 10 men in a fight with the Comanches. We'd have been right in the middle of it. My thanks, Mr. Faber. You'd have done the same thing if you'd had a minute to think. Once, maybe. Now, I don't know. Well, I think I'll go home. The herd's all right. That's what I wanted to make sure of. You take over for me? Sure. You're a miserable ramrod, but not a bad trail boss. Adios. Trying to do, Mushy. Get that horse to throw you? I was trying to do what you just did, Mr. Nolan. What did I just do? I'll come to a halt and get out of your saddle before your horse stops. Land it on your feet. Well, always remember one thing, Mushy. When you're riding someplace, don't get there ahead of your horse. Try it on that hill. Up that slope? Yeah, that way you won't roll so far. I'll try, Mr. Noah. Thank you. Can you watch me? I think I'm better. Making a mistake, son. You talk to Mr. Faber. You with Mr. Faber's herd, son? Well, what counts is that steers with Mr. Faber's herd. What's going on here? Why'd you fire the warning shot? Well, he figures he's caught himself a rustler. Red handed? Put that gun away, Mushy. Well, Mr. Nolan, put it away. You want to give him a chance to draw, honey? 
Flushy, can you tell me which way our herd is from here? That's right. Now, which way was this rustler hazing the steer? Did you ever hear of a rustler hazing the steer back into a herd? All I know is hazing that steer, and he ain't got no right to. He's got every right, Mushy. This is Frank Miller. He's a herd cutter. You know what a herd cutter is. Yeah, a herd cutter. Hey, he's a man hired by the ranchers. Uh, he stops the herd, and he cuts out other people's strays that get mixed up in it. I think. That's right, Mushy. How about all that's left for you to apologize to Mr. Miller, and we'll get going. I guess I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. Think? If you want to show him how sorry you are, how about hazing that steer back to the herd? <laughs> you a cook, Slouse? Yeah, I could just tell. And the speckled circle G. And that black one there, he's a diamond boss. There's the E.D. You sure can't spot them brand. He's the best. He's been doing a lot of years. Cut it for all the ranchers in the valley. He's calling maybe 28 brands at once. You just missed one there. Yeah. Get it, Joe. That ain't the first one either. I saw you cut out a couple we missed. Well, when I first knew him, he never missed a one. Well, it's a big hurry. He's probably getting tired. Oh, he's getting a few years on him. Maybe his eyes aren't what they were. You never noticed anything, though. Well, sure I did. Well, oh. That do it, Frank? You're cleaner than hounds, tooth. You can take him on up the trail tomorrow morning. Good. We'll bet him down, then. <laughs> you got quite a haul, didn't you, Mr. Miller? Yeah, better than a hundred head, I guess. Hey, you'd have cost us a pretty penny. How many years has it been that you've been working cattle? Well, now, there's a question. You know, I never did keep track. But this young whippersnapper here, he ought to be able to tell you. Who, Mr. Favor? Yeah, I was cutting before he could set a horse. No, I ain't kept track neither. But how long's it been since you come up north here, Frank? Why, it's going on seven years now. That long. <laughs> Say, Rowdy, you seen Jim Quartz? Yeah, I sent him out brush beating for strays about an hour ago. Ain't he back yet? Don't see him no worse. He ought to be back by now. You better take a look, then. Son, you better take a couple men with you. Yeah, what for? Well, uh, he might have run into something. We've been having a little trouble around here lately. Trouble? What kind? Been losing beef. Indians? No, not around here. We don't know who it is. But uh, your man might just have run into something. See to it, Ruddy. Yeah. Funny thing, you know, I never noticed these losses till just lately. It uh, couldn't have been too much then. Not all at one time, but just sort of a steady drain. You know, more than you could account for by natural causes like weather and disease. But there's just no trace of them. All the stockmen in the valley are getting up in arms. Well, everybody losing? Some more than others, but everybody, including me. Coffee's ready. Good. I can use some of that.
heard me? Put up your hands. Uh, now, hold on, mister. You got me wrong. This ain't my fire. No, of course not. But it'll do. How do you mean? We'll show you. Wait a minute, mister. You gotta listen to me. I'm with the trail herd. I'm just gathering strays. Sure. But that ain't one of your strays. It's got the brand of one of the ranchers in this valley. It ain't my fire either, nor am I running iron. I came up and surprised him, whoever he was. Thought he had one of our strays. I yelled. He ran up that draw. Well, you can find these tracks. There's tracks all over the place. What do you look like? Well. Hard to see. Riding a bay horse with a blaze. More than a hundred in this valley answer that description. Don't I at least get a trial? You've had it. We're tired of you drovers coming through this valley and fattening your herds at our expense. We're just gonna make an example of you. Look, mister, at least give me a chance to prove what I say. My boss will vouch for me. I gotta tell somebody. I don't want to die out here alone. You ain't gonna die, Jim. Now let him go. You his boss? One of them. Now, did you hear what I said? You, uh, you don't know who you're talking to, boy. I'm deputy sheriff of this county. You're sure acting like one, mister. But it's your own fault. You drovers, it's the only way to fight you. And not with vigilante law. We'll abide by real law, but you ain't gonna hang one of our men, deputy sheriff or no. And I tell you, he's under arrest. Now, you say you abide by the law. You try to take him, and you're going against it. What kind of law is putting a rope around a man's neck? If he's under arrest, why didn't you take him to jail? Give him a trial. All right, we'll take him in. But he'll hang anyway, don't worry. Rowdy, you gonna let him take me in? Yeah, well, maybe that's best for now, Jim. He has got some authority. We'll find out about this and get you out in no time. In the meanwhile, we'll, uh, we'll ride along with you just to make sure you get there safe. come to love a place, but this valley sort of grows on you. Having your own spread makes a difference, too, Gil. I recommend it. Uh, maybe someday. Now, don't wait too long. I almost did. Might never had it at all if it hadn't been for my boy. Yeah, well, it's different for you. You got a son. Yeah, Andy. Nineteen already. Uh, that's right. I suppose it sounds kind of foolish, but, well, he's what all this is for. You know, a couple more years, he'd be able to take over. We built it up pretty good for him. Then I can cash my checks any time, and it won't matter. Say, where is that son of yours, anyway? Why, he's taking care of the ranch while I'm gone. He's a nice boy, Gil. I, I'd like you to meet him. Maybe we'll just ride down before you get away in the morning. Oh, I'd like that. Looks like your boy's coming in. Too fast. Something's wrong. What is it? Quincy's in jail. They had him strung to a tree when we came across him. For what? For rustling, I guess. He evidently came across the fella who they were after, and he got stuck with the evidence. Evidence? Yeah. A down calf, a fire, and a running iron. No wonder. The mood they're in, just a running iron would be enough. Uh, Quince tried to tell him they were making a mistake. He'd have been dead if I hadn't gotten there when I did. They had the law on their side. That's why I couldn't talk them free or anything. Think he's safe in this town, Frank? Oh, for a spell, but they'll probably have a pretty speedy trial. I left Bailey in there and told him to send word if anything went wrong. Gil, you figure this fella of yours telling the truth? 
Quince. He's one of the best men I got. I trust him as far as I would, Rowdy. Or you. He's no rustler. Mr. Favor, look. Looks like a whole delegation. More like a posse to me. Frank? The whole kit and caboodle. Town fathers, major stockmen. Who's the boss, Frank? This is Mr. Gil Favor, gentlemen. One of the best trail bosses in the business, and I ought to know. I had a hand in his training. Gil, this is Morgan Shaw, our sheriff. This is John Rye, mayor of the town. That's uh, Marsh Cox. Yeah, I understand you're holding one of my men. That's right, but he won't be held long, I can assure you. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because I can assure you that he's innocent of the charge. How can you be sure of that? Well, I know the man, that's all. Well, I don't. And I don't know you. For all I know, he could have been acting under your orders. What do you mean by that? I mean you trail herders always manage to leave with more stock than you come with. Now, wait a minute, Morgan. Now, uh, Frank, you stay out. Why should I? I just told you this man's a friend of mine. Maybe that don't make it any better, Frank. Now, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Accuse me of being in some illegal deal with Mr. Favor here? Oh, Frank, you know better than that. We're not trying to accuse you of anything. Well, then what do you mean? Well, you know as well as we do that we're losing stock some way. You yourself are. The only thing we can figure is the trail herds are picking it up as they go through. Then you are accusing me. You're accusing me of not doing my job. Well, no, no, Frank, not that exactly. But it is possible that one time or another you do miss a few sometimes. Yes, I do, because my eyes aren't what they once were. Maybe I should have admitted it and asked for help. But I want to tell you this. I didn't let through all the stock that we've lost. Take a look in that Holden Corral over there. That's what I cut out of Mr. Favor's herd. Over a hundred head. Well, that's partly what we mean, Frank. Seems like a lot of cattle for them to have picked up just passing through. We can't help picking up strays going across a range. You know that. Then I cut them all out. That's my job. Now, you take a look at the main herd. You won't find one, maybe two, with our brand. Maybe not. How many would we find if we could turn them inside out? Yeah, and after all, we find one of his men with a hot fire and a running iron now. How many other irons are there in this crew? I know a raw, blotched brand when I see one. Uh, maybe you weren't watching for him, Frank. You were reading our herds. But we're holding this herd until we can check it thoroughly. It's all right, Frank. You go ahead, check the herd, satisfy yourselves. We will, first thing in the morning. It's getting too dark tonight. But we'll leave a guard here to see that you don't move anything. All right. If you've satisfied yourselves, there's nothing here, then you'll let my men go. No, I didn't say that. You're not having stolen cattle wouldn't prove him innocent. Anyway, that's for a jury to decide. What jury? You and your friends? Tell you something, mister. You better let him go or you're going to be in for trouble. Well, now, you just try that, Sonny. We're not afraid of trouble. We'll be ready for you, and maybe you'll join your friend. Frank, you coming? No, I'll stay here. Suit yourself. Sorry, Gil. So am I. What are we going to do? I don't know yet. Is there any chance Jim will get a fair trial in town? Fair, yes. But who's going to prove him innocent? I guess that's up to us somehow. Yeah, but how? We're just going to have to flush out the man who really did it. Well, what happens if we can't? I don't know. How about Quince? He's all right. I just checked at the jail. Now, you don't have to worry about Morgan Shaw. He's an honest sheriff. And he'll keep them safe until the trial. When's that? They got it set for three. They're not waiting for the circuit judge. They're forming a county committee. Vigilantes? Well, it's better than no trial at all. Oh, Gil, this is Andy. Andy, this is Gil Favor. Howdy, Andy. Glad to meet you, Mr. Favor. My father says you're a great man. Just another cow hand. There's a few things greater than that. Not to my father. Well, now, they don't come any greater than he is. Yeah, I know. 
sorry about all this, putting you to all this trouble, Mr. Favor. We're not being very hospitable, are we? Uh, I guess it can't be helped. Are you ready, Favor? We'll get him over there. My men will squeeze him through. Your men will hold and drive him after us. That satisfactory? Let's get it over with. <laughs> We didn't see anything. What about Blutch brands? No. You wouldn't take my word. Look, Frank, all I know is we're losing stock somehow. Maybe that drover hasn't got any. Maybe he has. What do you mean? Maybe he's got some way of getting them past us. Maybe he sent them around and through the pass and out of the valley. You think he could have done that without me finding it out? I don't know, Frank. Now, wait a minute. I don't care what you think about me. But nobody in 40 years has questioned Frank Miller's integrity, and you've got no call to now. You're doing an injustice to a friend and a neighbor. Nobody's questioning Frank's integrity. Personally, I'm convinced you had nothing to do with it, Favor. Sorry we didn't take Frank's word for it. I hope you'll forgive us for that. Anyway, you're free to take your herd on. Not without my man Quince. He has to stand trial. Before a vigilante court? I assure you, he'll be treated fairly. If you want to testify for him, you may do so. If you have any evidence in his behalf, you can present it. Well, you know I haven't got any evidence. How could I? But I know the man is innocent. If you can prove it, he'll go free. I promise you. It's up to you. I'm warning you. I'm not going to let any vigilante court hang any man of mine, especially when I know he's innocent. Like our sheriff told you, we don't want trouble. But if it comes, we can take care of it. If he's sentenced to hang, he'll hang. What are we going to do? First of all, show me where that Brennan iron was. to go on. Not enough to prove anything. Not enough to convince anybody Quince was telling the truth. I was convinced when you vouched for him. Let's see where those tracks lead. Where do we stand? Well, if we can't track him out, we're going to have to think him out. People must have talked this over. Aren't there some suspects? Well, first we thought it might be Indians, but they would have left signs. 
So would any outside bunch of rustlers, and we found no sign at all. Well, then it must have occurred to you that it might be somebody from here in the valley. Yeah, we talked about that, but that's just a blank wall. You see, every stockman is a solid citizen, and every one of them has been losing stock. Now, there's nobody in the town that could be doing it. Why not? Well, it's too big an operation. First off, where would they hold the stock? Then where would they sell it? Except to pass and herd. Now, that's why the suspicions finally got to rest on you fellas. Yeah, I see. Hey, isn't there any local market? Oh, sure. Town butcher. <laughs> he couldn't sell that much meat in 10 years. Of course, a tannery buys hides, but uh, well, what would they do with the carcasses? Where do they get their hides? They buy them from all around. Of course, most of them come from Fort Hawks. That's an army post over in Warm Creek. How far is that? Oh, 20 miles. Less over the hill. And where do they get their beef? Oh, they buy from all of us all around. It's a matter of policy, they say, to spread out their buying so nobody will accuse them of playing favorites. Why, some of their stock's driven in from three, four counties away, I'm told. So then nobody but them would know exactly how much beef they're buying from this valley? No, I suppose not. And it's the biggest local market? Oh, by far. Well, then that's where we'll check in first. Who's in charge there? Uh, Colonel Cook. Of course, you'd want to see the supply officer, uh... Andy, what's that fellow's name? Uh, uh, Lieutenant Hill, I think. Oh, yeah. Andy took over the last stock we sold him, but it's quite a while ago. Anyhow, he'll tell you who you want to see. All right. Now, wait a minute. Don't you want us to go with you? All right, and I can handle it. Say, would you go back to town and keep an eye on Quince? Maybe you can delay the trial until we get back with what we can find. Uh, which way do we go? Well, right over the hills, follow this wash up to the saddle. You'll see it down the canyon, down the valley there. Right. We'll be back as soon as we can. Well, I'll do what I can. Good luck to you. Say, could you tell me where I might find the supply officer? Lieutenant Hill, uh, I just saw him down there in the supper store. Well, thanks, Corporal. tobacco. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. What's the most important item in a sutler's store? Tobacco. Next time you run out, you lose your franchise right then and there. Lieutenant Hill? Yes. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Howdy. My name's Favor. I'm boss of a trail herd that's going through. A little short on men, a little long on cattle. I was just wondering if I could sell you some beef. I'm afraid not. We're pretty well stocked right now. I see. You uh, buy all your beef around here? From the ranches around here, yes. Yeah, well, you get a better price that way. But um, I'd be willing to give a good price, too. No, thanks. You're not even going to ask me my price? Say, you must be getting a good one. I'm busy. Uh, you uh, buy all from the same source, huh? Look, Mr. Favor, let's drop the pretense. I've heard about you and your trouble in town. Military intelligence, huh? Something like that. Now, why'd you come here? What do you want from me? Just some information. What information? Well, somebody's rustling some cattle. I think they're selling them to you. That's absurd. Is it? Then you won't mind telling me who you're buying your stock from. Well, I've already told you. We buy it from many sources. I just want to know who they are. You don't believe me, huh? I'd just like to see the records. They're government property, Mr. Favor. I couldn't show them to you if I wanted to. I haven't the authority. Well, who has, Colonel Cook? No. Nobody this side of Washington. Look, this means a man's life, an innocent man's. His innocence or guilt doesn't concern me, Mr. Favor. I simply haven't the authority to show you those records. Now, you're going to have to take my word that the charge is absurd. I have nothing to hide about the way I conduct my office. Nobody's accusing you of anything. You're suggesting I knowingly bought stolen cattle. No, I'm suggesting somebody's selling you stolen cattle, which is a much different thing. You could be buying in good faith. 
Now, all I need to know is who you've been buying the most stock from over in the valley lately. And I cannot tell you. Oh, won't? Let's put it this way, Mr. Favor. I wouldn't if I could. All right. That's all I need to know. You know he's lying? He's in it, all right. He's probably buying at cut prices and pocketing the rest. Jasper like that will leave the army rich. Won't be the first. Well, what are we going to do? How are we going to prove anything? Let's look over their beef. Not that way, gentlemen. You can leave the way you came. Just looking around? This is government property. I'll have to ask you to leave. Several plans. The only one I could make out was Circle A, though. I wonder if there's any other way we could get back to those pins without getting shot. Not before dark. I got another idea, though. Gotta make tracks. They must have brought them in some way. So let's see if we can cut a trail on them. I tell you, this looks like a regular Santa Fe trail for critters, the way these tracks go every which way. I don't know. I think it's hopeless, you know? Maybe. Let's try a little bit further. here in this backcountry box can until the brands heal. And drives them up the wash over the hill to the port. Pretty simple. Now all we gotta do is find out whose brand is the Circle A. And I guess they'll know that in town, huh? Let's go. Wentz is gonna be a happy man. James Quince, the jury finds you guilty. The sentence is hanging. Get up. Well, we might as well get it over with. Well, now, wait a minute. You can't do this. Favor may show up at any time with some new evidence. You don't want to hang an innocent man. The verdict's been reached, Frank, and I think they're right. But you don't have to rush right out to the nearest tree. You can wait a little, can't you? We've waited long enough. We might have done it yesterday and save all this trouble. Well, I'm not sorry about that, but it's legal now. There's no sense putting it off. No, Frank, this ain't the kind of thing you want to sit around and think about. Well, you might lose your nerve, huh, Jim? Morgan, I'm pleading. Get out of my way, Frank. Go on. I'm sorry, Quince. You did everything you could, Mr. Miller. I sure do thank you. Go on, Quince. Come on, let's go. Find anything, 
Gil? Yes, it did. I know who's doing your rustling. Who? I don't know his name, but I know his brand. I know where he holds the stock until the brand's healed. And I know where he's selling them. All right, who? What's the brand? The Circle A. You know what you're saying? Yours, Frank? Show me. Just show me. And you better be right. All right. Put him back in jail. We'll have to see about this. you called your friend, Frank. It's no lie. Look at all those tracks down there. Joe, there's cattle all over this range. They'll go anywhere. There's grass and water. Now, what we want to see are those blotched brands you were talking about. Where are they? Well, they couldn't have been taken far. All we have to do is look up one of these washers here. And waste more time? Oh, we're sick of your lies. That's right. Pretty evidence you're just stalling for time. It could be a trick. There are men trying something back in town. We'd better get back and finish it. Great friends, using a man like Frank this way. What are we gonna do? Better get back to town. Frank. Bring every available man. I'll stick with them. Find a thing. What are you doing here, Favor? You might as well move on, unless you want to stay for the hanging. Now, oh, wait a minute, Marsh. That's all I'm asking you to do, is wait a minute and listen to me. No, I didn't know the Circle A was Frank Miller's brand. But even if I did, why would I pick that particular brand? if I hadn't really seen it on those cattle. Go on. I don't believe Frank is involved in this any more than you do. Besides knowing what kind of a man he is, saw how it hit him. Sorry for that. But it does point up the fact that there is a logical suspect. Who? Oh. I should think that'd be pretty easy to figure out. It'd have to be somebody who could sell the brand. Somebody who had the power to sign Frank Miller's name on a bill of sale over at Fort Hawks. Andy? No, I don't know anything about the boy. I only saw him yesterday. He seemed all right as far as I could see. But he does own a bay horse with a blaze, just like Quint said he saw. Well, isn't it possible? He has free reign handling his father's stock. He has taken cattle over to Fort Hawks for sale, alone. Well, what about the boy? Well, he's only been here a couple of years. Not very much like his father, we know that. 
I guess he grew up with his mother in towns, you know, while Frank was out working cattle somewhere. But that don't convict him of rustling. You're letting this man throw dust in your eyes, turn you away from the verdict the court's already brought in. We're not turning away from anything, Marsh. I don't take Faber's word any more than you do, but he has got a point, and it is possible. Yes, it is. He may be stalling, he may be making wild guesses, but he has got a point. Only you'll have to prove it. That's all I ask is a chance to do that. And the promise that you won't try hanging quince while I'm away. I'll give you an hour, no more. Hour. All right. I'll be back, Jim. I thought you were in town. I, I was just coming in myself. I want to talk to you, Andy. Can it wait? No, it can't wait. Andy, for two years I tried to get close to you like I figured a father and a son ought to be, but for some reason I just can't do it. I guess maybe it's my fault, but... Well, the uh, time has come when you and me got to understand each other. Whatever you say, Pa. Andy, all my life, I tried to live the way my dad taught me. Honest, straightforward. Give full measure to every man. Double deal no man. Do a good day's work and lay your head on the pillow at night with no sense of guilt. Now, that's the way I've lived. That's what the name Frank Miller has stood for all over the West for better than 40 years. Yeah, I know, Pa. pa. Wait. Son, if there's anything you ought to tell me, uh, why don't you tell me now? What things, Pa? Well, if you have made any mistakes, it's a good time to get them off your chest. No, no, there's nothing. Well, take your medicine, wipe the slate clean. There's nothing, I tell you. Look, son, if you've got a man's life on your conscience... I don't know what you're talking about. Andy, look, look, you know how I feel about your being here and how I feel about your future. This is your place, Andy. The circle A. A is for Andy. I don't want it. I never wanted it. I hate it here. I'm going back to St. Louis. What? I'm not like you, Pa. Can't you understand that? I want to get out of here, and I'm going to. Get out of my way, Pa. I'm through. <laughs> Stick over by the sheriff's office. Roddy, you come on with me. Right. Find any Miller yet? No, I doubt he's even in town. He's probably still at the ranch. We haven't got time to go out there now. I got another idea, though. Well, what's that? The tannery. The third link in the chain. We should find the evidence we need there. Saddle. Our friend Lieutenant Hill may be here. Could be. That was him, all right. The other fellow's probably the tanner. The third link in the chain. Andy steals the kettle, Hill buys him. Tanner tends the hides without examining the brands too close. A very neat operation. Maybe it's too neat. Maybe we can't prove nothing. We can try. Come on.
Watch your step there. That's a lime pit. Over here. This must be them. Circle A. Now let's see if it's the same on the other side. Looks like a rafter D. Wasn't hard to blotch that one. Phew. I guess this is what we've been looking for. Go on back, get the sheriff, bring him here. I'll see what else I can find. All right. your hands up slow. Got quite a little business here, Randy. Better than ranching, huh? Guess you're just not a common like your father, huh? No, and I don't want to be either. Well, you'd rather steal from him and his friends and shoot at him from ambush? Mr. Favor, this is a gun I'm holding. I can use it and I will. You clear out now. Take your herd and go. Tomorrow morning, I'll meet you on the other side of the pass with 30 head of prime beef. No questions, no problems. You're forgetting one thing, aren't you? man named Quince? Yeah, well, you can manage without him. Yeah, but can he manage without me? I don't think so. I don't think I like your proposition either. Take it or leave it. I don't think I have to do that either. Don't you? They'd never find a trace of you in that lime pit. They'd never know what happened to you. I think they would. See, Roddy's already going for the sheriff. They'll know the whole thing by now. And I don't think you could get rid of all the evidence quick enough. Grant! Grant! He knows we gotta get rid of these hides. Help me throw them in the line pit. Don't blame yourself, Frank. Well, I had my dreams of the future. I guess I forgot he might have had his own. Circle A.
Hard for the son when he figures his dad is such a great man. I sure didn't help any, what I said to him. Oh, it wasn't your fault. None of it. Mr. Faber, I guess you know what I'm going to say. Forget it. No. No, I'll never do that. But there's one thing I'd like to ask you. Yeah? Could you relieve me of cutting and branding duty for a spell? What well, for? I've had my belly full of rope. Yeah. You said this one never went dry. That's right. Something funny. Funny? It wasn't dry when I scouted it yesterday. Not enough water here for a dozen head. No more water this side of Coldport. I don't understand it. Something's wrong, Mr. Favor. What do you mean? Well, this creek is fed by a good spring up there in the hills. It ain't never gone dry. How do you know? Well, I've been up there. You mean there's water likely to be further up ahead? Bound to be. I guess somebody's blocked it off. All right, Pete, you and Roddy go on up. Mind if I go along, too? What for? Well, my family's ranch is up there. At least it was a year ago when I left. All right, you and Roddy take a look, then. Thanks. Dry. Where's your folks' place? Just up ahead. You know, I don't get you, Dan. Most of the men have been busting coming this close to home. You weren't even going to ride up and take a look? Well, there ain't much to see. Well, what about your folks? Just my ma and my brother. Well, if you weren't going to say hello, how come you uh, come along with me now? There's something wrong. Was it? Took a Hold your fire out there! That's Cal. That's my brother. It's Dad! Dan! Oh, Danny! I'm so glad to see you. It's good to see you. You're safe. Cal, ain't you going to say nothing to your brother? Hello, Dan. Hello, Cal. That's quite a reception you gave us. Didn't know it was you. When the house burned down. It was last night. Caught us in our sleep. Just had time to get out with a few things. That's a shame, ma'am. Well, this is Rowdy Yates, ramrod for the outfit I ride for. My mom and brother Cal. Glad to know you, Mrs. Fletcher. I apologize, Mr. Yates. We should come sooner. We could have offered you our hospitality. How'd this happen, anyway? Didn't just happen. It was set. Cal, you ain't sure of that. Oh, how else do you explain it? That's why I shot at you. Thought it was Travis coming in. What do you mean, Travis? 
Carol thinks Frank Travis, our neighbor, set the fire. Why do you think he'd want to do that? He's trying to run us off. He wants our land. Oh, Cal. The creek is drying it. Yeah, that's why we came up here. And that's not all he wants to do. He, he's damming up above. Ponding it, he says. But he's trying to run us off. And ain't it mighty funny that, that the fire breaks out just when we don't have any water to fight it? Water wouldn't have done much good the way that fire went. Who do you think did it? But Frank Travis, he's been a friend of Pa's and yours, Ma, for a long time. Ever since we was little back in Illinois. But he and Cal been quarreling ever since you left. What about? Anything, everything. He took the high ground up above, now wants to spread out down here. It's the only place left. I don't believe Frank done that. Well, who do you think did it? I believe it was an accident. Accident? Well, somebody stopped up this creek here. Yeah. Danny, where you going? I'm gonna have a talk with Frank Travis. Won't do no good. I argue myself hoarse. I don't plan to argue. He's got two new men now. With guns. We got three, you know, that makes it even up. Danny, no. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about anything. We'll handle it. You coming, Cal? Start nothing up there. Who are you worried about, Ma? Me or Dan? Both. I don't want no more fighting. Travis started it. Calvin, if Frank really wants us to get out, we will. You tell him that. Are you crazy, Ma? I'll tell him no such thing. Just like he said. Yeah, the water will run over and fill the creek in a few days, but that doesn't do the herd any good right now. Well, there's even odds, you said. Let's go tear it down. I aim to talk to Travis first. I'm through talking. Let's tear it down and be done with it. Now, you listen, Cal. Who's in charge here? Looks like you still are. All right. Come on, then. Now you know why I wasn't anxious to hang around home. All right, let's get some of those middle bags down. You touch one of them sandbags and you'll never touch nothing again. Lori, go get your paw. Hello, Flora. Danny, well, when'd you get back home? I'm just passing through. Better run and get your paw. We need to talk. She's a real pretty girl. Cal thinks so, too. I thought you'd be married by now, Brother Cal. What happened? I see where that's any of your business. You've got a real friendly brother there, Dan. Oh, listen, Cal. I told you never. Hello, Mr. Travis. Flora, I never said a word about you. It's good to see you, boy. What you doing here? I'm passing through with a trail herd. The cow business is good for you, it looks like. Well, that's why I'm here now, Mr. Travis. Our cattle's got to have water. Just like Cal and Ma do. You know, they could have used that water last night. Yeah, I know. I... I'm sorry about that. Sorry? You set that fire, you had it set. 
You know I wouldn't do a thing like that, Dan. Wouldn't you? Why don't you tell them how you're trying to run us out? It ain't your ma, Dan, or you, where you're here. But I admit I'll be glad to see the last of him. You take it easy, Cal. You don't believe I set that fire, do you, Dan? No, I don't, Mr. Travis. We got there as quick as we could, but it was too late to do much. Yeah, especially without any water. Well, who are you? Rowdy Yates, ram ram for the outfit I ride for. Seems kind of strange that the fire breaks out right after you shut the water off. I got my own ideas as to how that fire started. What do you mean? I don't want to say. I want you to say, Mr. Travis. Ask him. He thinks I caused it. He, he thinks I was drunk. You'd been drinking. You were mad at me, and you started early last night. I was asleep, I tell you. Both Ma and me. I woke up to the smoke and the flames. I'm not on trial here. You are. You stopped the water. Only for two or three days. I'm ponding and eat more water from my stock. I warned you to fill some barrels for a few days' supply, but you wouldn't. I didn't know you were coming through here with a herd. I didn't know there was going to be any fire. I guess there's no blame. Well, maybe not, but we got 3,000 head of cattle, and we can't bring them all the way up here. We're going to have to let your dam down. You're going to. That's right. You can rebuild it. We might even help you. We need water, mister. We'll fight for it if we have to. We don't want one, though. Well, I don't want to fight either. Let it down. Thanks, Mr. Travis. Dan, I was kind of hoping you'd stay home now. I'm just passing through. I was afraid of that. All right, let's get these middle bags down. I'm going to take a look up here, see how far they're climbing. I'll take the horses and put them over here. All right, good. Come on, Cal. It's your job, too. Look out! Watch what you're doing! Oh, I'm sorry, it was an accident. Are you hurt? I think it might be broken. I said I'm sorry. Will you come on down to help me lift him? All right. Oh. Easy, easy. Uh -huh. Mr. Travis! Mr. Travis! What happened? Accident. Can we take him inside the house? Sure, sure. Bring him in, Flora. Fix up the settee. Right over there, boys. Where does he hurt? My ankle. Dan, why don't you go get Mr. Favor? Have him bring Wishbone. Wishbone will know how to doctor this. All right. Hey, hey, can you settle back? Well, we'll let that water down. Don't you worry about it. Thanks. Come on, Cal. the touch. You know, on the trail drive, we don't see a girl as pretty as you are, Ariel. Doesn't seem to bother Dan much. How long have you known Dan and his brother? Oh, we grew up together. Of course, I was a lot younger then. He didn't notice me at first. Yeah, I don't know what got into Dan, going away and leaving a girl like you. Well, he wanted to see something of the world. Well, 
I guess he saw it, if you, you want to call it looking at the south end of a bunch of northbound cattle. <sighs> well, anyway, it ain't fair. Girl just can't up and go anytime she pleases. No, not unless she's got a husband or someone to take her. You married? No, no. I'm not fixing to either. I got a lot of the world to see myself. <sighs> you men. What about uh, Cal? What about him? Well, he, he don't get along with your pa much. Has that got anything to do with you? Well, I really don't know. Well, why are you scared of him? Scared of Cal? Uh-huh. Maybe. Maybe not. How are you? Well, well, well. Brought the horse land with that ought to cure you. Take a look at that. You sure you didn't do this a purpose? Well, you wouldn't blame me if I would. A nurse like her. This is a, a Flora Travis. It's Travis. No, take it easy, will you, Wishbone? He's been spoiled. <laughs> time since you come here? I come to see Mr. Yates. How is he? Oh, he ain't bad hurt. Flora's tended him. Their man's there with him now. I'll see the water's coming down. You agreed to that? Margaret, I'm, I'm sorry about all that happened, especially the house burning. It not no great house. We can build another. Cal tells me you're trying to run us out. Now, that ain't so. You and me been friends a long time. That ain't changed, I hope. No. That's good. Because I'd hate to think that after you and Josh and me and Effie had been such close friends all those years that... But I got to admit, though, that older boy is a tribulation. I just don't know how two brothers can be so different as him and Dan. Yeah, they are. I, I, I don't know what there is about Cal, but I swear that boy's got a devil in him. So did you have when you was his age. Maybe that's it. Well, Margaret, it ain't no matter for a joke. I got to admit that I'd be almost glad to see the last of Cal. Because of Flora, you mean? Well, if it was Dan, I'd feel different. Well, maybe Dan will stay. Maybe he'll see he's needed. I hope so. Well, it ain't broke, but it's a bad sprain. He isn't gonna ride for two or three days. Now, nah, wrap it up. You better get him back to camp. Oh, do you, th you think I ought to be moved? Well, I think maybe he ought to get some rest and keep off that ankle. Ma Fletcher! Oh, I'm so glad. Dad, it's been so long. Yes, it has, Flo. Come sit down. Oh. How's Mr. Yates? Oh, I'll live, ma'am. Absolute rest is the best thing for it. How long? Oh, at least two days. Well, he can stay right here, sir. We'll be glad to look at him. All right, then. You've got a border. You catch up when you can ride. Well, we've got grass now and, and, and plenty of water. Uh, well, we've been pushing the herd pretty hard lately. I thought as long as I've got to be here. Now what are you pushing for? Well, Mrs. Fletcher's house burned down, and I thought we could take some of the men, maybe, and we could rebuild it. God bless you, son. I wouldn't ask such a thing. Oh, you don't have to, ma'am. We're all friends at Dan's, and they wouldn't mind. Would they? It'll be up to them. Uh, you just give them the chance. That'll do. Thanks, Mr. Favor. I might have known the kind of man you was. Dan thinks a lot of you. <laughs> it's mighty good of you, Mr. Favor. My men and I will be glad to help, too. You? Cal. Oh, see you first thing in the morning, then. I'll stay the night with Ma. It's the same to you, Mr. Favor. Yeah, sure. Uh... See you in the morning. Margaret, 
Won't you stay here till the house is finished? Oh, please stay. There's plenty of room. We can take care of our own. I better not. Thank you, though. At least stay for supper. Come on, Ma. Thank you, Frank. Flora, I didn't get a chance to say it. You're looking fine. Thanks. So are you. Yes, sir, he sure is. Went away a boy, come home a man. You can see your ma needs you here, son. Oh, I got a job, Mr. Travis. I signed to stay on to Sedalia, Missouri. You can quit when there's need. There won't be much once the house gets built. You still aren't ready to settle down yet. You want to roam, see the world? Well, I don't blame you. I like to roam myself. Only it ain't respectable, poor girl. She's been like that ever since you left. She's been like that since she was so high. I envy you her cooking, Rowdy. I guess there's some good in every misfortune. Take it easy, now. Good night, Mr. Travis. Oh. We'll have something cooking in no time, Ma. Not for me, Dan. I'm tired. I just want to lie down. I got a place fixed up in the feed room. We can stay out here in the straw. All right. Do you mind if we talk? Talk? I'd like to have a little conversation about a rock just accidentally fallen. You don't think it was an accident? Oh, maybe I got no other way of thinking. What else you want to talk about, little brother? Was it accidental? I said it was. Now, what are you carrying on about? All of a sudden, you come back here for no reason? And the fire? You know, you're getting me madder and madder, little brother. <laughs> and if I keep it up, you whip me, just like always. Is that it? Like I always do, you deserve it. Would you mind saying why you and Mr. Travis are fighting? You think that's any of your business? You think it's none of my business? <laughs> you, you know, w when you ran out of here, you got no more rights. You give them up. It's your own doing. You know, you ain't married yet. And the way she keeps looking away from you, it looks like maybe you ain't gonna be. What about that? <laughs> ah, she'll marry me, all right. I don't believe you. Then don't. I, I don't even want to know one thing. Uh, are you figuring on staying here? I hadn't, but I think I will. You wanted to get out. You wanted to see the world, be a big man. Well, you done it. Don't come crawling back here, trying to spoil things. What thing? She was always a, a good thing for you, wasn't she? More? Here, I thought she was favoring you. You know, I have to keep reminding myself you're my brother. Well, forget about reminding yourself. You forget about everything, except you're just passing through. You said it yourself. That's right. That's what I said. I guess you've been to a lot of big cities, Mr. Yates. Well, I've been to San Antonio, and a couple others, New Orleans. Well, tell me about them. What do you want me to tell you? the fun, the excitement of each. 
all the people, what you love the most. Hmm. Well, like, like bits of all of them, I guess. I've got to go to some place like that. I want to see it just once. Well, maybe you will someday. Someday? Well, I don't intend to wait. I may just go off and, and find a job. Well, there must be jobs for somebody like me. Yeah, a pretty girl can always get a job in the city. Not the kind of a job for a girl like you. How do you know what's right for me? <laughs> in a big city? In a very large city. Well, no, Laura, I don't think you'd make it. Oh, of course I would. I'd make a very good waitress. Yeah, you sure would. Or sales lady. Mm hmm. Oh, whatever girls do in big cities. Well, they do lots of things. They do? Mm hmm. Then what's the matter with Dan? Who's Dan? There. What was wrong with that? Not a thing. Dan wouldn't like. What was that? I don't know. What was that? Laura! It's Cal. If Paul finds out, I'll be back. You oughtn't to be here. Now, Paul warned you. I don't pay any attention to what your pa says. Don't touch me. I told you I don't like you to touch me. Uh -huh. Now, what do you want? I want your answer. I don't have an answer. Well, I've been waiting for a year, and it's got to be now. And it doesn't have to be now. And even if I said I'd marry you, Paul would never let it be. He says that you'd never, ever see me again. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what your pa says. He doesn't have to know what we do. Is that what you think? You can't stop us, Mr. Travis. I warned you to stay away from her. Now I'm going to have to whip you to show you I mean what I say. Now, that kind of evens things up, doesn't it? Hey, Fletcher. I don't like to butt in, but this thing's just liable to go off. You leave her alone, Cal. You hear? Thanks, Mr. Yates. He ain't a fit man for you. Well, what's the matter with him? You're not to have anything to do with him. I'm not? All right, we'll use the old foundation. First of all, start clearing that mess away, and start hauling lumber. Using the old foundation won't be long, as soon as we get the debris cleared away. You're a drover, Mr. Favor. How come you know how to build a house? Oh, I had to help put together one of the ones I grew up in. Know a few tricks about it. Now we'll have a snug, warm house up in no time at all. Most as good as the old one. Now, we sure thank you. It's 
good as the old one, he says. I don't know, the old one had memories. I ain't got nothing left of your daddies. You have his sons. I have you. And Cal. No, not Cal. Ma. Danny, I know I shouldn't ask you, but if you could see your way clear to stay if here. If I stayed here, there'd still be trouble between Cal and me. Yeah, well, maybe Cal feels like we can't get together without trouble stop. And that's my fault. Ma, how did that fire start? Cal was drunk. I don't know, maybe he knocked over a lamp, or maybe he busted on purpose in one of his rages. When I found him, he was staggering around the smoke and the flame like he didn't want to get away from it. I took him out. He didn't give me no trouble. Danny, please. Don't say it, Mom. Look, I know you don't want Cal around, you want me. But you can't have both of us. And this is Cal's home, ain't it? It is, ain't it? Danny? down to help build the house. Aren't you afraid? No, I'm not scared of you. Why not? Flora, you wouldn't know how to be bad if you wanted to. Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's so. You know, the only reason you're giving me the eye is because you're an unhappy girl, isn't that right? You know a lot of things, don't you? I know one thing. You think the man you want doesn't want you. Well, you're wrong. Well, then why'd he leave? Why'd he run away? Why don't you ask him that? He said there was nothing left here for him. You've hardly even talked to him since you, he's been back. He said he was just passing through. I should think a girl would be able to change his mind. Especially one that kissed like you did. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Yates. <laughs> I'm not. You know, I'll bet those men down there fall over themselves for a cup of coffee. Well, maybe I'll take your advice. Maybe I won't. Put it over on the fire and then pour it when they want. Hmm? Well, I, I think maybe I'd better pass them around. Hmm? Just as you like. Hey. What are you doing here? At sea catch. I brought some coffee. You came here to see Dan, didn't you? Now listen, Flora. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm warning you. You stay away from him, you hear? You listen, Calvin Fletcher. I'm not taking any orders from you. You got no rights over me. You just remember that. Cal. What you doing to that girl? You leave her alone. Leave her to Dan, you mean? If that's in her mind, yes. She always did like him better than you. And if she don't want you, there's nothing you can do about it. Why is everybody against me? What's wrong with me? I'm just as good as Dan, maybe better. Cal, it ain't that. It's you can't tell somebody who to love. Love is, it happens in your heart. It, it ain't a thing you can force. Well, I'll tell you something. He's not gonna get it. I've missed you. After you left, I, I was pretty lonesome. Well, you had Cal. Cal? He 
Peggy says that uh, you're going to marry him. He's crazy. I never said I'd marry him. Well, you ought to know that, Danny. Well, I've been away a year. Yeah, I know. And after you left, there was nobody but Cal. I didn't think there'd be anybody. But I never said I'd marry him. Danny, couldn't you stay? You want me to, Flora? Yes. Well, Paul would like it, and, and Ma, she needs you. And what about Cal? Oh, no, Cal wouldn't like it. Danny. You're not afraid of Cal, are you? Well, I guess I am. Well, I never thought you were a coward. Afraid of what he might do. And maybe I am a coward when it comes to Cal. Well, he used to beat you when you were younger. But you always stood up to his bullying. It's more than that now. Do you know how much you mean to Cal? Yeah, well, that's not my fault. Even if it was? Danny. What are you thinking? I wouldn't blame you, Flora. Do you think that I gave Cal any cause to... Well, you were lonesome, weren't you? Flora, wait a minute. Good night. I ain't as young as I thought I was. My back is killing me. I'm gonna have to sit down here and rest a little. Well, I thank you, Frank, for coming here to help. I hope we can patch things up. You know, it ain't right for close friends like us, especially now. We're both alone. There's a thing stands between us. What's that? It's something maybe I should have talked about a long time ago, but now I got to. Even if it means I break my promise. Promise? What, what promise, Mark? To Carrie. Carrie, my first wife. It was on her deathbed. You'd run away. Deserted her all those months. She figured you was dead. Well, Margaret, I, I was wild in those days. And, you know, I, well, I meant to come back. Anyway, I was her best friend, only one she had to turn to. You never did know, did you, what she died of? What, well, a letter said a fever. Childbed fever. Child. You left before she knew. You was gone all those months, you never did write. So she didn't want you to know ever. That's why I promised her you'd never know who your son was. The child lived? He still lives. The only mother he ever knew. Cal is your son. Carrie was near dying. She didn't know where you was. Josh and I figured we never could have any children, so we agreed to raise them as our own. Carrie wanted the boy should never know. Didn't want him to know he was an orphan. I tried, I... I don't know. Maybe I failed in that. And you let me come here and settle right here beside you. Well, there was nothing to do short of telling. Josh is your best friend. He couldn't hold nothing against you. And you kept quiet all those years after what I did to Carrie. 
Well, Frank, none of us free from error. And you lived a good life since then. But Flora, she and Cal are brother and sister. Half, yes. That's why I had to break my promise. That's why you gotta do something. But what, Margaret? What? I've tried to stop it, but the more I stand in the way, the meaner he gets. He's wild, Margaret. Wild. And now I know why. What about Flora? It's Dan she wants, but if he leaves again, I... She's a grown woman. She wants marrying. You gotta tell her, Frank. Or the boy. Just don't wait too long. It'll be too late. What do you mean? I told you I'm not waiting any longer. Oh, well, listen, Cal. Uh, I'm sorry, but I just don't love you. It's Dan, ain't it? No. Well, I, I don't know. What, what does it matter? It matters to me, Flora. You can learn to love me. I'll make you come along, Flora. You just can't carry me off. Well, I can if I have to. Will my pa get after you? Oh, no. Not your pa nor Dan. I'll kill anybody who tries. Well, you just don't do things like that. You can't make me marry you. Well, maybe I can. If you don't marry me, I'll... You what? I'll have to kill Dan. I'm crazy. If I am, Flora, that's the way you made me. Now, you better come along with me. No! Now, now, don't make me hurt you, Flora. Just come along easy. Got the horses ready, we'll ride into the county seat, and we'll get married. You won't regret it. I'll get my rifle. Ready? Fletcher, he, he's got Flora out there on the rocks. Picked a good spot. It's gonna be hard to outflank. They're all down there. Dan, Pa, that cowboy. Cal, you gotta give it up. They'll kill you. Not until I get Dan. I promise you that. And your pa. Oh, don't, Cal, please. Well, there, there is one way. You can marry me. Then there wouldn't be no more shooting. You want to promise that? Travis! I want to talk to you. All right, Cal. I'm coming up. Travis, you better not. I have to, Mr. Favor.
That's far enough. Cal, you gotta come down. Sure, I'll come down. You let us go through. Let us get on those horses and ride out of here. We're gonna get married. No. Oh, yes, Pa, yes. Please. Laura, I can't. I can't let you. It's impossible. <laughs> Understand, boy. She's your half sister. You're my son. She? Me? <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. You, you wouldn't say something. You wouldn't say something like that if you knew what you're saying. Now, come on. Now, come on, tell me, tell me that you, you don't know what you're saying. It's true. I just found it out. I'm your father. You're crazy. You're all crazy! None of you know what you're saying! I'm better off. I'm better off with none of you. I don't want to have nothing to do with any of you. I wanted to say goodbye, Mr. Favor. And thank you again for the house. It was our pleasure, ma'am, really. What about Cal, Mrs. Fletcher? Well, he's gone. For good, I guess. I should have stopped him. Maybe I could have. I doubt that, Mrs. Fletcher. No, when he was younger, he needed more care. And I'm to blame for that. His pa and I got a lot to answer for. How is Mr. Travis? Oh, he'll pull through with floor nursing them. Say, Mr. Favor, I guess I better stay here and take care of Ma now. I've already got it figured up what you got coming, boy. Oh, no, Mr. Favor. I agreed to finish that cattle drive. Now, come on, look, boy. If you're going to a wedding, you're going to need this. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Goodbye. Bye, Roddy. See you later, Dan. See you on our way through. Oh, I kind of feel sorry for old Cal, wandering through the world, looking for something he's never going to find. Maybe he will. I don't know. I don't think so. Not Cal. It happens to a lot of people, I'm afraid. Yeah. Some of them seem to need it more than others, though. Yeah. Say, uh, how's the ankle? Oh, fine. I've forgotten all about it, in fact. Well, yeah. Got to admit, she's a real pretty girl. Everything's so dry around here, even the dadgum wood burns before you get it in the fire. All right, 
Mike, come on with that water. What's that? It's the water. Well, I wouldn't have known if you hadn't told me. Well, it looks just like any other kind of water. Well, the trouble is there's so much of it. Well, we're running kind of short. You mean that's all? Well, I gotta have some liquid. Come on, let's squeeze this barrel. Well, come on. But, Mr. Wishbone, my ma told me you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. Well, this isn't a turnip, and your ma isn't here. Well, you're just making it tighter. Now, untie it over there. All right, now, let's tip it. I said tip it. This is just about the driest work I've ever done. What'd you put in these sandwiches anyway? Buffalo hide? We ain't even in buffalo country. Well, that's something to be thankful for. I'm probably the best without and cook in the whole Sedalia Trail. Yes, Mr. Wishman. Matter of fact, I'm probably the best without and cook in the whole United States. Sure, Mr. Wishbone. What's a without and cook? Oh, mushy, you're an ignoramus. No, sir, I'm a, I'm a Texan. You're the cook's louse with the most without and brains. Now, like I said, I'm probably the best without and cook in the whole Sedalia Trail. I can cook without and salt, without and sugar, without and eggs or milk, or even a decent side of beef. But there's one thing I can't cook without. What's that? Water. Maybe Mr. Nolan will find some. What am I supposed to do in the meantime? Go get my medical kit. Ain't anybody sick, Mr. Wishbone? Are you sick? No, I'm not sick, but you're gonna be if you don't hurry. Is there anybody sick around here, Mr. Wishbone? Then yeah, I am, but I don't know it. Am I sick? If you don't shut up, you're gonna be sick past doctrine. Mushy, you ever hear of rum cakes? Well, I heard of rum and I heard of cakes. Not together. What is it? Rum cakes are a French pastry. Now, you ever hear of BBs? What's BBs? BBs are bourbon biscuits. Bourbon biscuits? Well. Yes, sir, this will be the first time in history anybody ever got drunk on biscuits. to them wandering around loose like that. Beats me, but when beeves start heading for Sedalia on their own, I'm gonna quit. When they start going on their own, you're fired.
the herd down here. It looked look like you were alone. Not quite alone, Digger. Well, too bad, boys. Better luck next time. Uh, you got it all wrong. We weren't going to bother you, young lady. Get out. Look, I'm... Uh... Field favor, this is Pete Nolan, our herd scout. We're pushing the herd about four miles back. We saw you dust and figured we'd just better check it out. What do you think, Ruth Ann? Well, they have that cow hand look about them. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of sorry, Cobbers, but you see, to a uh, blow in, it's usually rapidly rules in the back locks. He means the newcomer can't be too suspicious in a wild country like this. I'm his translator. Oh, my name's Gothage. This is Miss Ruth Ann Harper, late of Claysville. Pleasure, ma'am. You handle 200 head all by yourself? Well, not quite. I say, uh, where are you bound for? Down under. Ah, Australia. I'm gonna start a run down there. Ranch. Ah, oh, yeah, a ranch. I always thought Australia was sheep country. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, down the south. But there's a lot of good cattle country up in the north. A lot of good cattle country and millions of miles of nothing else. <laughs> She's a city Sheila. You know, she wants to stay in Melbourne or Sydney. Or San Francisco. There's more beauty in the foot of the bush than all the cities in the world, Ruth Ann. She'll change her mind. One of us certainly will, when we're married. You know, I had to come all the way to Texas to be bullied by a woman. You say you're from Claysville? Yes. I've never been in Claysville, but I have a feeling I know you from somewhere. Was it San Antonio? No. Houston? Dallas, maybe? No. Let him go, will you? He's a stockman like us! Let him go! Let him go! Hey, try breathing again, Pete. Oh, listen, I'm sorry about this, Cobber. His name's Binabara. He's my scout. We've been friends since we've been kids. He's my Cobber. You're Cobber. That's right, he's my scout. Your scout, huh? Well, I guess you know you're going into Comanche territory in about 10 miles. Wrong. What do you mean, wrong? Wrong! Comanche all around here. Well, this doesn't make much matter, does it? It matters all right. I don't mean to butt into your business, but two men and a woman alone in Comanche territory. Now, listen, Mr. Favor, I've always been a loner, except for these two. I think we can take care of ourselves. <laughs> That's not a war party. They only wanted to warn us that they're here. Everybody be still. English? Some English. Some Spanish. This Comanche land. We are on our way north. Far north. This Comanche land. What's he after? Beef to let us through. Four cows come? Three thousand more. And twenty more men. Toyops people hungry. Children hungry. One, five cows. Mr. Goffage, we could wait for my herd to come up, but I don't recommend it. It's your game, Yank. You play it the way you want. I'll make it up to you. Any ten steers of mine you like. Thought he only asked for five cows. We'll add five for insurance. Good. Good. Mark your weak ones. I'll cut them out. Wait a minute, Pete. You choose, Toya. 
Shoes all ten? You picked the best beef in the herd. Go ahead. Wish I knew what you had in mind. Maybe 50 miles of red Indian land. Five cows, good business. Ten cows, friendship, I think. Very smart, Mr. Faber. Woman for sale? For sale? Give two knives, two guns. No. Three guns. Well, I must say, I'm very flattered. I feel like the bell of a ball. Well, it's not so funny, darling. Four guns. Not even for a hundred guns. Looks like that insurance of yours might have paid off already, Mr. Faber. You know, maybe I'm not so much the loner I thought I was. Mr. Faber, I don't know whether you ever made the offer, but if you wouldn't mind combining the herds for a way, I'd certainly be obliged to you. What do you figure on stopping tonight, Pete? There's a river about two miles north. That sound all right to you? Not so good. Well, why not? Storm's coming. Maybe the river will flood. Oh, there won't be any storm. I know this Texas weather like I know the alphabet. Run, run, not far off, Copper. House, barn, fields, all empty. Well, that sound all right to you, Mr. Faber? Yeah, that's fine. Boss, listen. What's the difference? Uh, we'll meet you at the run, I mean, the ranch. Good. Come on, darling. What storm is he talking about? Listen, I know this country. I've heard of some crazy reason to pick a night camp, but this is the craziest I ever heard of. No, I just forget it then. Well, I can't forget it. Every time that Jasper opened his mouth, he made a fool out of him. Well, quit helping him out so much then. Look, we're going to have enough trouble handling Comanches without you having your backup. Well, it ain't the Comanches I'm worried about. Uh, I gathered that. Well, it ain't that Ben Burrow either. Huh? I finally figured out where I saw that woman before. Where? It was in a courtroom in El Paso. They had her up for slickering some fellow out of his life savings. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Come on. I don't scratch it easy. To... Don't drop it in the mud! All right, now, come on. Turn. Now, don't scratch it on that wheel. Coming around now. I don't know why you want to take it in there. You're just going to have to bring it right back out tomorrow. So long as I got a kitchen, Mr. Yates, I'm going to work in it. And I can't work in a kitchen without a stove. What a now, fool is this. Ain't but half a roof over that room anyhow. It's still a kitchen. Well, cooking Start... in the kitchen is going to make what's going happy. I sure ain't going to argue about it. Well, look at me. I didn't say a word about it, Green. Take it easy and don't scratch it going in that door. We're not going to scratch it. It starts raining and we can float the thing out. Now, what's going on? Oh, he's showing how that boomerang thing works. I've never seen a piece of wood act so crazy in my life. Here's something you can't make it do. Throw it out there and make it circle and come back to you. How about that? That silly thing reminds me of a widow woman down in Galveston. Got her hooks on old wishbone. Everything he did, why, well, here she come back. <laughs> Say, could uh, you show me how to make one of them? <laughs> Say now, could you show me how to make one of them? It's easy. I'll show all of you. Ruth Ann! Hello. Ruth Ann! 
fiance is calling you. I heard him. Uh, the cook, he uh, needs a little water in here. I don't believe I caught your name. Rowdy. Rowdy Yates. I'm Ruth Ann. Yeah. Watching the twilight? Yeah. It's nice out here after the heat of the day. Care for a drink of water? <laughs> I didn't bring a dipper along. I'm not thirsty. You're not? Yeah, I see a real big cloud out there. It looks... Looks like a sailing ship. Yeah. Right behind it, there's a lamb chasing it. <laughs> I don't see any clouds. You know? Mm-hmm. Rowdy, what are you doing out here? Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Yates. I'd better see what Mr. Garfidge wants. Shame on Look, you. Look, we were just talking, that's all. Now, listen to me, young fella. Oh, uh, huh. hello, boss. Uh, uh, you and Miss Harper getting along all right? No. He came along. Lucky I did, too. You know, of course, she's engaged to Mr. Goffage. They're not married yet. Pete tell you about her? Looks like he told everybody. She'll take that poor man for every nickel he's got. Almost be worth it, too. You hear that? Now, how do you know she'll stop at Goffage? Well, give her a half a chance and she'll swindle her way through this crew like a plague. What do you want to do, turn them loose in Comanche territory? Well, no. Well, then, let's just stay clear of anything that ain't our business, huh? Both of you? Well, where's my watch? two on them sausages, chopping the meat, and stuffing the cases. Oh, come on, Mr. Wishbone. Uh, Benabar says you talk as fair whack out of the diddly. Me too, fair dinkum. Yeah? <laughs> they whack on Wishbone. They like them, especially the snorts, the sausages. Oh, well, why don't you talk English? Gonna let that good snork go to waste? Oh, no, I ain't hungry. Sure couldn't be one of our men. Evening. I'm looking for Mr. Favor. You found him. My name's Adler. I was on my way north when I spotted your herd. Your Nighthawk said you might have a dry place for me to sleep. You eating yet? Not since morning. Well, oh, come on in. Thanks. Yeah. Wish? Another plate. Sure to appreciate this. Um, no, this is Miss Ruth Ann Harper. Ma'am? Mr. Adler. And lucky man next to her is the man she's gonna marry. 
Uh, Richard Goffich, how are you, son? Congratulations. Hope you like the snorks. I mean sausages. What is that? <laughs> hey, uh, what are you heading for? Well, no place in particular, just anywhere I can find me a job. You a drover? Off and on. Say, I don't suppose you, you might have a spot open, Mr. Favor. Well, I might. Well, this, this looks like my lucky day. A hot meal and maybe a job and a nice dry place to sleep. Well, I wouldn't count too much on a dry place to sleep. It's quite a ranch. Is this the only part still standing? No. There's a barn. You must have passed it on the way here. It's quite a ways from the house. What happened, Mr. Faber? Where did the owners go? Oh, on west. Maybe back to civilization. Well, maybe the Comanches went on the warpath. Well, that sounds terrible. It can be. Say, anytime you want to uh, bed down, you can put your horse in the barn. Well, thanks. I'll do it now, if you don't mind. Many thanks, and uh, good night. Good say, night. Quince, why don't you give him a hand getting squared away? You bet. Oh, you must be tired, Dolly. I am, rather. Why don't you go upstairs, huh? You don't mind? No, run along. Good night, Richard. Good night. Good night. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. They told me in Claysville you'd gone north with a herd. Why didn't you wait? I waited. I waited and I nearly went out of my mind. Then they told me you tried to break out. They said you were in solitary. They said you'd be there forever. They said, they said. How did you get out? How do you think? That don't matter. It's all over with now. Who's this Goffage? He's a cattle owner, a rancher. He's taking a herd to Australia. Where'd you meet him? He was around town and he had a nice smile. So he smiled and said, marry me? And you said, sure, why not? Nothing else on my dance card tonight? Well, it was better than starving. Besides, kind of took me by surprise. No one else has ever asked me to marry them. Is that what you want? <laughs> of course it is. Then I'll marry you. As soon as we get to a town. As soon as I get a stake. Where did you say this garbage was headed? Australia. How's he figure to get those 3,000 beeves across that ocean? Oh, he doesn't have 3,000. He has 200 in with Mr. Favors and two we get past Indian territory. How many of those men are garbages? Just one. 200 cows, $10 a hide. That's a stake. As soon as he splits with favor when he's off on his own, that's the time. Look, I don't want you to kill him. He's a good man. He's been kind to me.
Do you love him? Of course I don't. thing to tell you. Are you worried about the woman? Now listen, Cobber. I know you don't like her. I know you're afraid that she'll lure me down to the city and that it'll be quits for you and me. But that'll never happen. I told you from the beginning and I'll tell you again. It'll be the three of us on the finest cattle run you ever saw. All right? Last night, you said there'd be a job. I said there might be. Well, Mr. Favor, I want the job. I mean anything to you? During? Nope. Let me tell you something. You need me. I do? Sure. As a go-between with the Comanches. And that's you, huh? You bet your life that's me. I'm more Comanche than white. My father was Lone Eagle, blood brother to Toya. You said your name was Adler. Well, that's a German name for Eagle. Johnny Adler, Johnny Eagle. I still can't use you. Let it go. No, I ain't gonna let it go. I'll break your face and you walk away from me. Nobody's walking away from you. I just want you to get it into your head that I can't use you. Now, isn't that simple enough? No. No, it ain't simple enough. I'm staying with you. No, you're not, Johnny. You got a reason? I'm boss of this outfit. I don't need another drover, and that's reason enough. Well, I'll give you a better reason. Like this. Now will you get out? Oh, no! Thank you, Mr. Favor. I'll go. I'll go, but I'll be back. I'll be back so you can do that again. You'll want to see how it comes out next time. You need some help, Miss Harper?
Jim? I think I see what you're doing wrong. Now, look. Try turning your wrist over before you let it go. See? I have turned it over. I've turned it over and under and inside out, and it still goes straight as a bullet. No, I'll show you what I mean. Look, stand back. Now we know one thing, it ain't the wrist. A bunch of two-year-old kids throwing them crooked sticks around. Can you do it? I wouldn't waste my time. That is yours. Well, I don't want it. <laughs> you know, I think your scout's jealous of my scout, Mr. Favor. Fry's all been out of shape. You'll get over it. Well, it's a funny thing about jealousy. It can tear a man apart unless he's sure of himself, can't it? Stay away from her, but she's a mighty attractive woman. <laughs> He's a handsome boy. So why do they like each other? It doesn't bother me, Mr. Favor. Ruth Ann's a flirt. Maybe that's part of why I love her. You know, Garbage, there's some women who well, they just never get used to cow country. Well, what I mean. I think I know what you mean, Mr. Favor. You mean that this is a bad match. That I'm making a mistake. I think that what you see is a woman who doesn't love me. Well, I see something else as well. I see toughness and loyalty. I see a need to settle down, take care of a home, have some kids. She was willing to marry me without love. And I think that maybe love will come in time. By the way, Mr. Faber, did you know that she was proved innocent of that charge in El Paso? You knew about that, huh? I knew about that before I asked her to marry me. You know, I got the feeling you two were gonna come out all right after all. So long as Mr. Adler doesn't come riding back again, huh? Well, incidentally, thanks for getting rid of him. Oh, that was my pleasure. I say it can be done. What are 20 whites against 50 Comanches? You can attack at night. I know it can be done. Would I have ridden this far to talk foolishness with my blood uncle? They said Toyup was a great warrior. Were they wrong? Toyup. The buffalo are gone. But in their place are 3,000 steers. And many guns. I have another thought. There is a woman. She's my woman. She will come here with me if I ask her to. Toyup will say he holds her as hostage for all the guns and half the herd. And for you what? The woman, 200 steers, and the scalp of a man named Favor. Bring her. It's the animals I want to show you the most. Koala sitting up in a tall tree, eating his eucalyptus leaves. The platypus, the emu. Wait till you see the feathers I'll take from an old emu to make you a bonnet. You really are full of plans, aren't you, Richard? I could plan for you, Dolly, all the day and all the night, and never reach the end. 
I don't know why you're so good to me. Oh, I think it's the other way around. No, it isn't. I haven't even given you honesty. About what? Tell me about the baby kangaroos. What did my uncle call them? Joeys. Tell me about the Joeys. How does that look? Looks like the Ritz. Pleasant dreams, darling. Sleep well. Richard! Yes? Nothing. Sleep well. Good night, darling. Good night. Got my girl well, Cobber. All right, Cobber. Good night. You wanted a miss. You wanted to get rid of her. Take it easy, Cobb. It's true, isn't it? Isn't it? You take it easy. been up for 10 minutes, Mr. Faber. Now what are we waiting for? Rowdy, hold the herd here until noon. If we're not back by then, move them out. Mr. Faber. Pete. I hope has the girl. No. But he'll give her up for all the guns and half of the cattle. Well, tell him we'll do it, of course. What's our choice, Mr. Faber? No choice. Tell him. Well, what's the matter? It's half my herd he wants. Well, of course it's half your herd, but you can't hold back now. Now, listen, Mr. Faber, I'll pay for those cattle if it takes me 20 years. I'm afraid the owners couldn't wait 20 years. What kind of a man are you? You know what they'll do to her, even I know. Look, I'd give my arm to save her, but I can't give this herd. Why, you filthy coward, you rotten filthy. Tell him no deal. We could follow him. He sure ain't gonna let anybody follow him to Toyop's camp until he's certain he ain't being followed. Where do you go?
boss. Ben Burroughs going after the girl. Maybe you ought to have some help. Yeah. How do you take over the beat and I get back? Mr. Faber. Room for one more, huh? Yeah, sure. Trail boss. Where's the woman? Safe? You brought her here on your own, Edler. You're a real fool. Somebody else who wants her as badly as you do. Anytime I want to leave, the woman leaves with me. Anytime. You want to bet? Comanche camp, well hidden. How you come here? This man found you. We followed him. And 20 more men are following us. All with guns. They're lying. They wouldn't leave the herd alone. Can you stand against that many guns, Tauya? Give us the girl for 50 cows, and there'll be no bloodshed. Gotta hand it to you, you got them worried. <laughs> What's so funny? You'll find out. The trail boss here has talked himself into a real bad corner. Well, what's that? Comanche gauntlet. I won't challenge you for her. From now on, never be seen in our camp. Go. I know their ways. Maybe I can make it. No, my fault. No cover. I'm going to give it a go. If I don't make it, you can try it. Richard! Richard, give it up. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not worth it. I'm not what you think I am at all. I'm a cheat and I'm a liar. I've worked in dance halls. I've been in jail, and not three nights ago, I promised to marry a common thief at the first opportunity. You made a mistake, darling, about the other man and about yourself. Take it off me! Take it off, Richard! Richard! Come on, Goffitch! Get up, Goffitch! Come on, Goffitch! Come on, Richard! Oh, get up, Richard! Let me go and help him! Get up! 
Let it be said that tie-up would not kill a man of courage. <laughs> he was wrong the gauntlet. Tie-up and men of his word. <laughs> oh, no, Dolly. No, no need to make such a fuss over me. We've been so tough at times in this, haven't we, Cobber? Hi, Cobber. Richard, I'll go with you anywhere you say. To the end of Australia. But you'd rather stay in this land, Dolly. I'd rather be with you. Anywhere. Anywhere. Hey, Scout. That offer you made about uh, giving me one of them boomerang things, that you'll go? Still go. <laughs> you'll have to teach me how to throw it. Aye, Carver. Aye, Carver. <sighs> Mr. Favor, if a man were to take over that ruined run back there, do you think he could make a go of it? I'm positive he could. Come on, Dolly. Let's go back, huh? 